Hi, my name is Tamara Wade. It is Wednesday, September 25th, 2019, and this is my first podcast. I will say I am a little nervous, but not as nervous as I would have been about a year ago. Um, I have been doing social uh, Facebook Lives and everything, so that's helped to kind of loosen me up and um, make me not so nervous. Also, have been working with Sean and Brand Lift and um, have had such a great experience with them. And they have also helped um, improve my skills and my team skills with regards to doing um, Facebook Lives and everything. So really excited to get this podcasting going and to bring some new things um, about me out into the industry of real estate. Also, um, some things about my personal life and uh, my builders and just excited to get this going. Yeah, this is exciting. Thank you so much for letting me be on your first show. This is incredible, guys. You know, probably three or four months ago, Tamara had uh, had reached out and told me this uh, kind of a, some of her goals, podcast, coaching, some things like that. I was like, all right, are you ready for this? And then here we are. Right. This is your first one. So definitely make sure you're following Tamara. Check out her YouTube or social media channels. Uh, she's going to have a channel on Anchor anchor.fm that will push out to stitcher itunes so so more than likely you're probably gonna have what maybe a show a week something like that yeah Good. i'm i'm gonna commit to a show a week show a week um and hopefully be able to do more as they things pop up things that come i want to get out um out there in the public but perfect. definitely perfect. one show a week for sure perfect and once again thank you for letting me be here um, one of the things, so for anybody out there that doesn't know who Tamara Wade is, um, tell them a little bit about where you come from. I know you're from Canada, and that's an a interesting story. So uh, at what age did you leave Canada? And tell us a little bit about that area there. So I was born and raised in Montreal, um, Quebec. It's in Canada. And relocated here at 16 years old to Alpharetta. Um, in Atlanta, Georgia, and uh, my father's company relocated uh, relocated us here. It was a dream of his to move us from Canada here to the United States. He obviously saw it as a land of opportunity, and he was definitely right. And um, so, you know, a lot of things have happened since we've moved here. Yeah. So we talked off camera earlier about that when you got here. I guess it was a culture shock for sure, right? Absolutely. From, see, because me growing up, this is so stupid for me even to say it, but I'm just going to be real. I grew up watching uh, Bullwinkle. <laughs> I thought Canada was just a Mountie, a moose, and a squirrel. I didn't realize there were people living there. So when I finally got to go there when I was 30, just north of Quebec, uh, I was like, oh, my goodness, they got towns just like we do and people. Mm -hmm. When you graduated high school, which direction did you go to college? Did you go to work? What was kind of your path at that time? Um, I will. I'm going to jump back on the, the culture shock. It is a culture shock, though, to go from Canada to the United States. Um, and even me being young, um, the Canadians are a little bit more relaxed. Um, their day cuts off at five o'clock. Yes. Um, or at least around there, their, their malls don't stay open as late, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I think that they, you know, family dinners are a little bit, you find that a little bit more frequent. Mm -hmm. Um, although in Montreal where the city where I grew up, it was city living. I mean, I learned how to ride a bus at 10, 12 years old. So when we moved to Alpharetta, um, it was country. I looked at my mother, like, what have you done to me and my father? Like, why are we living in the country? How am I going to get to the the mall because um, oh there is goodness. not a city bus around the corner so it oh was different but um so jumping over to your other question about you know what did I do once we moved here so um I went to a local college my parents weren't ready to send me off mm -hmm. and I don't think I was ready also um soon after that I had my first son and then my second son working a part-time job and really didn't at that point couldn't finish college didn't know what I was going to do, F kind of a little bit of a, a lost soul. Didn't really know where my future, um, what my future would hold. Yeah. And um, kind of, yeah, didn't, real estate was not even in my thought process or my horizon at that point. So you didn't grow up as a girl. I can't wait to be a real estate agent. Nope, right. not <laughs> even in my um, family background. There's not a realtor in our, our family. Yeah. So I know a little bit about the story, how you got started. So for anybody that doesn't really know who you are, so 
what, what was it? I know you, it was your mom. So y'all were just going to see houses. How did it happen from there? Um, yeah, we happened to be a, a day off for me. So, um, I, and I'm not shy about this, but I worked at a car wash. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a cashier at a car wash and uh, it was a rain day. So we went and looked at houses and my mom, she's just very forward speaker and just asked the lady, hey, how do you get into real estate? And the lady basically told her and said, I could use somebody to cover my days off. And my mom asked, you know, Tamara, would you be interested? And I said, yes. And so from that point forward, went in there, fell in love with it. Um, the builder at that point um, went ahead and sent me off to real estate school. And going from a car wash to a realtor within a year and going from, you know, a minimum wage type job to making a six figure income from the time I was 23 till now I'm 43. But it's never, it's never been easy. It's um, real estate is one of those things you get, you get what you put in is what you get back out of it. So, I mean, I work 60, 70 hours a week and there's been a lot of sacrifice, um, both on my part, my family's part Yeah. with this kind of a, a schedule. Oh yeah. I mean, it's a grueling schedule. You know, I was a lender for eight years for a lot of people that don't know. A similar type of schedule. And we've joked about this, that a lot of agents, especially even lenders, think, oh, I'm going to get into real estate because I can have flexible hours, you know, and make six figures, you know, in the first year. But that's not true, right? No, <laughs> no. Um, I, you know, the thing is, if you think you're going to get into this and this is a quick fix for, um, you know, you need income, you need income fast, um, that's the fur- furthest thing from the truth. I mean, you've got to be yeah. prepared that you could go easily six months while building your pipeline and getting things set up and getting yourself set up and your marketing and everything. Mm-hmm. And then once you kind of get that going, then you've got to stay consistent at it because if you fall off the wagon and you don't stay consistent, neither does your income. Yeah. And we were talking about that earlier is that consistency is the key to most success because, you know, we, we all have been a victim to the get rich quick scheme or mm-hmm. any scheme, but all of these people put these courses out, want you to buy this, buy this book and you'll in 60 days, you'll quadruple your income. And we both know, especially having had the discipline in the real estate market itself, whether you're an agent or a lender is that you get a call today, a prospect, and you may have a couple of months before you find something, maybe weeks before you get a contract. And then, who knows when you get paid. Mm -hmm. So you could, uh, an agent could start literally today with your team and it might be 90 days before they get a paycheck. Is that right? Um, and absolutely. (laughs) And that's, that's, that's critical. I have, you know, with, um, owning a brokerage and being, um, the broker I have, you know, even outside of my new homes team, I have general real estate agents that, um, come to me and I have an example of one where, um, you know, newly, she was re- relatively new at this time and came and sat in on my couch in my office. And I have a couch in my office because I want people to feel comfortable to come in. Mm-hmm. I don't want them to ever feel stuffy. Um, if, you know, if, I know this is, you know, podcasting and not yeah, everybody yeah. can see, you know, we are filming, but not everybody will see what we're doing. But our office here in Atlanta is very um, relaxed. It's a mm-hmm. rustic, old, old, old building. But, um, you know, I just, that's my environment. I like people to feel relaxed even when they're at work. And so I have a couch in my office and she came in and sat down and kind of was questioning, you know, is she doing the right thing? And, and just was struggling. She had a rough um, situation with one of her transactions. And, And, you know, I told her about the ups and downs of it and, you know, to kind of stick with it and be consistent. And she's really, really worked hard at her marketing and being consistent Mm -hmm. and everything. And she just recently surpassed the number one agent in her office. And she's only been in this a year. And I mean, I'm confident she's going to exceed six figures this year. And I think she'll continually do that forever as long as she stays yeah. like that. So she's, it's very impressive, but that just goes to show it's what you put in is what you get out. Yeah. And the advantages of getting to that level that she's getting to right now, and we talked about it this morning on the ride over here is once they get a taste of it, or I always like to say, once you hit the top of the mountain one time, it's not as easy, but it's easier to get back up there and you never want to be back down lower. You Mm -hmm. want to make sure that you stay up there or go find a bigger mountain, right? (laughs) Right. And there's no shortcuts. That's the other thing. I mean, we, we, I I love using her as an example because, um, if you follow her on social, 
um, you can see like she's doing everything. So she's, you know, started out with the Facebook lives. And then next thing you know, she's doing um, the, uh, the stories now you see her doing that. And then, you know, you see her doing Instagram and the boomerangs and all the different things. And I mean, um, she's, she was doing the, um, what was the other thing on private messenger, the, the bots, the, yeah, yeah. Messenger bot. Yeah. Messenger I actually bots. had a conversation with her about those. Yeah. So she's got, she's doing, she's doing the right play like we do. She's making sure that she's what we call, like to call omnipresent mm -hmm. so that every channel, even though some of the ones she might be on may not directly get business from it, but indirectly because at least they know who she is. Mm hmm and they could be in conversation with somebody else. So oh, you need to call, what's her name? Mm -hmm. She's everywhere. And that's what we're doing with you. You know, mm -hmm. um, you've, you've had a big name for a long time, but now that you're stepping out and doing this, mm -hmm. you know, other projects that you've got coming up that you're going to be doing, um, you know, you, you, you're more than likely going to be a household name in the next, you know, year or two. And that's kind of a goal right. to be able to do that. So consistency, you know, what do they say? Preparation. Uh, and consistency gets you to that success. Um, so to kind of finish up your first inaugural podcast, I know we were talking earlier, what are the things that you want to cover on your shows in the future? Because if you're going to do roughly one a week, mm -hmm. uh, I know you're going to have, I'm sure, from time to time, maybe a builder or definitely some of the agents or top agents. What are the, what's the, the premise or the game plan as far as podcasts that you, that you're going to have on your show? Um, I, I really don't, I really want to give a lot of different, um, I guess, aspects of the real estate industry and, um, not have it where it's just like one specific part of it. Um, and it be kind of dealt with from different sides of it. So, yeah. you know, new homes, resale, um, being an agent or being a staff member, um, you know, what does it look like from the family side of being, um, you know, the family side of real estate as well? And it just, you know, what is it like being a third party working with um, real estate, that kind of thing, something like brand lift as an example. So just really bringing all different aspects of it um, and just keeping it interesting and definitely, um, not boring or stagnant or repeating what somebody else has, um, already put out there trying to yeah. you know, be interesting. Yeah. I, and I, I see that a lot. I mean, we both, you know, follow a lot of people online is that one of the biggest mistakes I think some people will do is they're, they're not authentic. They're trying to copy somebody mm -hmm. else. And when you do that, you can only handle that for so long and then your true self comes through anyway. Mm -hmm. So just like how you started this show, you know, you know, definitely guys follow her journey. This is a, this is a journey. This is number one. This is, as they say, uh, the, uh, the first step right to the walking 10,000 miles. This is your first step, you know, fast forward six months from now. And you, you know, you've seen builders, agents had other, maybe people from other industries in talking mm -hmm. with you. People are going to have a place to come, whether it be YouTube, social channels, uh, iTunes, Stitcher, all these different things. If they find you, they can, they can learn something. Even if mm -hmm. it's not about real estate, you may have on a, uh, well, you might have an inspector, um, appraiser, attorney, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, insurance lenders, sky's the limits. That's why we encourage. And, and a lot of the stuff that we do is because mentors that I have and people encourage me is that if you do a podcast like you're doing now, you have the ability to bring in whoever you want and talk to them. You learn stuff, but you let everybody else learn as well. So that's, that's why these are so cool. Yeah. I mean, I think it'd be fun. Um, you know, just one of them would be, uh, cause we hear quite a bit is especially with new homes agents because they have to be in subdivisions on weekends and stuff like that is even bringing in somebody on, like my husband, who's dealt with this with me for 14 years is how do you support that? And how do you work through that from that aspect? And, you know, what are some things that, you know, I've been able to do to help him, you know, um, basically be supportive of what I'm doing, you mm -hmm. know, and that kind of thing. And what things could I be doing that maybe I'm not. So I might get some surprises when we're being, oh, yeah. when we're doing the podcasting that way, but I think that would be fun. You know, you just never absolutely, know. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we, uh, like in myself, when I, when I'm just like teaching, when you teach somebody how to do something, 
that's they say that's the only way you can truly master something is to teach right mm -hmm. because when you're teaching it you got to actually do it the right way and even like in our agency sometimes if i'm showing manuel or christy or something a certain thing i start catching myself it's like crap i haven't been doing it that way but that's the way i'm supposed to do it right so and then when you, if you have guests on same thing yep. you're going to learn from some of your agents oh you yeah know, you may hear one of your girls or guys say something you're like crap i forgot about that yeah or i, oh, I could be, be doing, doing that, that. Yeah. yeah yeah so it's, it's it's very enlightening to know that you can grow from it but just having a show that where people can see you learn a little bit about your personality, your demeanor, because a lot of times, a lot of people that may be watching this first one, all they've ever seen is a uh, one dimensional picture or what two dimensional of a business card, a billboard, a magazine. They don't know who you are. No. And now they will. Yeah. Right? There you go. This is, this is awesome. Thank you for letting me be on the show today. Um, so anything else you want to tell, um, tell the crowd out there of your journey and what to expect in the future? Um, I think just stay tuned. There's a lot of interesting things to come and I've got a lot of, you know, uh, different plans for my team, the brokerage, and then also myself um, and my journey over the next year. So um, stay tuned. It's going to be fun. Number one in the books. Thank you. See you guys. Have a great day.